Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our Queen Mary 2 ship tour, where we'll also give you some tips and divulge some secrets to help you have a good time aboard this classy ocean liner. We left off at deck six, so now let's head on up to deck seven where a lot of food away at the King's Court Buffet. King's Court Buffet is located at deck seven midship and it's open daily for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and late night snack. So the location is another interesting aspect about the Queen Mary 2 as most cruise ships have their buffet at the pool deck and usually at the back of the ship instead of midship. Now take a look at some of the food you can expect here, starting with breakfast.
And that was an overview of the food we saw at the buffet during our voyage. We do have separate videos dedicated to the King's Court Buffet, so check them out if you want more detail, including how some of the food tasted. Now let's head past the King's Court Buffet to the Corinthia Lounge. It's a popular hangout spot with comfortable seating, a bar, and a small snack buffet. There is also live music here in the evenings. As we head towards the front of Deck 7, next up is the Spa and the Fitness Center. Here's a scale in case you want to see how many pounds you gained already. We didn't get a chance to go inside the spa, but here's a photo by Cunard of the therapy pool inside. And here are the prices for services such as waxing, salon haircuts, massages, pedicures, manicures, and even acupuncture. Here's the fitness center. Even though they say it's closed at 8 p.m., sometimes you still can go in afterwards. Take a look inside. Now let's visit the outdoor promenade area exclusive to Deck 7. It's a very wide outdoor deck area with many lounge chairs. When the weather is nice, it's a great way to exercise by walking or even jogging here. You could go all the way around the ship from the front to the back. At the front of the promenade here is the entrance to the observation deck. These are actually giant propeller blades that are being displayed like sculptures. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is a guest announcement. Thank you. And here are some nice views of the front of the ship with the bridge above. Now we're going to walk all the way to the back of Deck 7. If you're wondering, three laps around the ship on the promenade deck is 1.1 miles, while two laps is 1.1 kilometers. And here you can see the Wake Water Trail. There is a lot of space here. You also see some of these Spartan open areas at a higher deck later. Now let's head back inside and visit the Grill's Lounge and the Princess and Queen's Grill restaurants. These are suite-only dining venues located to the aft of the King's Court Buffet. Let's look at the Grill Lounge first, which is adjacent to the Queen's Grill. It offers a range of premium cocktail and wines. It also serves light meals throughout the day, including breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea. The Princess Grill is reserved for guests staying at the Princess Grill Suites, which are spacious but not as large as the Queen's Grill Suites. And here is the Queen's Grill, which is the most exclusive dining venue on board the Queen Mary 2. It is only for guests staying at the Queen's Grill Suites on board. Take a look around and then a sample menu of what's included. 
The Princess Grill menu is pretty much the same, but I've went ahead and put a red box around the dishes that are exclusive to the Queen's Grill, such as Dover Sole and Lobster Tail Thermidor. Now let's head up to Deck 8, which has mostly cabins, but has public spaces in the front and the back. At the very front, you'll find the ship's library. It has one of the most extensive array of books we've seen at sea. The library is open from 9 a.m. and closes at 6 or 8 p.m., depending on whether it's a sea day or a port day. Now even outside these hours, the library is still open, but the books are locked behind the glass cabinets. There are ocean view windows so you can enjoy the quiet and the view, grab a chair and read a book. There are also computer stations here. Sometimes, though not all the time, you can access the internet from here without buying any internet package. But shh, it's a secret. There's also a bookshop right next to the library. Here you can buy books, souvenirs, toys, plus board and card games. Now let's head to the back of Deck 8, where you'll find the Veranda restaurant. It's a specialty steakhouse that gets high reviews. It's open for lunch and dinner for $25 and $45 per person, respectively. Here's their menu for dinner. Now outside, behind the veranda restaurant, is the terrace pool deck. In the middle of this area is the terrace pool, which is a large rectangular pool surrounded by three hot tubs and a bandstand. There are many comfortable lounge chairs here for guests to relax on and soak up the sun. The sailway party is held here with live music plus great views. For a typical transatlantic crossing, you only have one festive sailway celebration here, so don't miss it. And here are some views of the terrace pool deck from above.
And that was deck 8. Let's go up to deck 9 now, the scenic way. To do that, we'll go back to the library at the front of deck 8. We'll first take the elevator all the way to deck 11. Deck 11. Then down to deck 7. Deck 7. And then back up to deck 9. The Queen Mary 2 actually had a pair of glass elevators at the lobby, but they were removed back in 2016. So here we are right into the Commodore Club, located at the front of Deck 9. It is a bar and lounge decorated with nautical themes, with panoramic views of the ocean. We didn't get a chance to visit at night, but if you do, you can enjoy live music from a piano player who performs in the evening. Right next to the Commodore Club is Churchill's Cigar Lounge, named after, of course, Sir Winston Churchill. Inside there is even a collection of books on cigars. On the opposite side of the Cigar Lounge is the Boardroom, which is a cozy meeting room that's open to everyone to just go in and enjoy, or can be booked for private events. The rest of Deck Night is mostly staterooms, but in the middle of this deck is the Concierge Lounge which is for guests staying in suites or a concierge class cabin to get help or just hang out. There are complimentary snacks and drinks inside. Here is a model of the Queen Mary 2 Ocean Liner. There is actually a larger and even more detailed model near the Queen's Room on Deck 3. The next deck that has public areas is Deck 11. We'll start at the front and visit the Atlantic Room. It's a quiet place with plenty of light during the day, so it's a nice area to hang out at if you're looking to relax or read a book. In front of the Atlantic Room is the Deck 11 Observation Deck, which offers some of the most impressive views from high up on the Queen Mary 2. Check out these views. Now all the way at the back of Deck 11 is the Grills Terrace. There are plenty of lounge chairs here for guests to relax on and soak up the sun. There is also a Whirlpool hot tub here. And like the observation deck earlier, you can get some amazing views here. This long flight of outdoor stairs is an interesting feature that connects this area directly to the terrace pool on Deck 8. These stairs here lead up to Deck 12. Before we go up, here's an odd looking door that you do not want to try to open because it'd be a steep drop from here to the promenade on Deck 7. Now let's go up the stairs to the back of Deck 12 some nice views here, and visit one of the most unique features of the Queen Mary 2, and that is the pet kennel. It's very popular, so if you want your pet to travel with you on the Queen Mary 2, it's always a good idea to book in advance to get one of the 24 available spots. The cost is about $800 for a 7-day transatlantic crossing. Pet owners can come to this lounge and hang out with their dog or cat. 
and this outdoor space here is for them to roam around and get some exercise. Here's a little more information about boarding your cat or dog directly from the kennel master, Oliver himself. Uh, you need to tell the booking officer about the food that you're going to order, so they're going to send us from the shore uh, going on board the Queen Mary. And then at the same time, you can order whatever you want. Like, apart from the kibos, we are giving like salmon, boat chicken breast, or something. Wow, that's... Anything. That's really nice. And that's included in their price, right? No, no, that includes everything. That's oh, okay. That's the part of the equation. Rice, pumpkin, and chicken. Oh. And, yeah. I'm doing this for 11 years. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> And before this, I was a zoo guide and animal handler in the Philippines for eight years. Wow, so you're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I, I just carry the heart for animals. Directly next to the kennel is the Borwa Cafe, which serves burgers and fries. But it was closed during our entire crossing. It might be open for a warm weather voyage that sails through the Mediterranean, but typically is not open for a transatlantic crossing. And here we have a huge open deck area. Maybe in the future they'll put in a water park with slides. Okay, maybe not, but some more hot tubs might be nice, right? Here's the big sign that says Queen Mary 2. Too bad it doesn't light up at night. You can play shuffleboard here as well. As we move past the sign to Deck 12 Midship, here is the outdoor entrance to the Pavilion Pool and Spa. It's a very popular spot with ping pong tables, a heated pool, retractable roof, plus a pair of Whirlpool hot tubs, and of course plenty of lounge chairs. There is a bar located next to the pool and offers a variety of drinks including fresh juices, smoothies, and alcoholic beverages. There is of course an indoor entrance to the pavilion and there is a large video display here that provides a lot of information on the Queen Mary 2 and the current voyage including weather information. Now let's step back outside the pavilion pool and up these stairs to deck 13 to the sports center. It's basically two areas enclosed by netting. The first on the port side is for those who want to practice their golf swing. Though during our crossing was out of service, so no club or golf ball was available. The larger area on the starboard side is a mini tennis court that's suitable for some fun paddle ball or pickleball sessions. And here is another wide open area, which Kinar calls the sun deck. A helicopter can land at that yellow circle which serves as the helipad. When the weather is nice, it's a fun area to play shuffleboard and there's plenty of space for kids to run around. These stairs here will take us up to deck 14, the highest on the Queen Mary 2. Here you could get some spectacular views. At the very front here is an enclosed area with windows called the Lookout. A brass ceremonial bell with Queen Mary 2003 engraved on it is stored in this cabinet. And that's it for the tour. Coming up, let's go through some Queen Mary 2 tips and secrets we have for you to make the best out of your voyage. So the first tip we have for you is to make note of the staircase letters which will help you orient yourself on the ship and also get to where you want easier. Most decks have four staircases denoted by A, B, C, or D, with A being the front of the ship and D at the back. So for instance, if you want to go to the Sir Samuel's Lounge to partake in the Godiva's afternoon tea, you go to deck three, stairwell C. Speaking of afternoon tea, tip number two is to show up early at the daily complimentary one at the Queen's Lounge. It usually starts at 3.30 p.m., but if you want the best seats close to the live music, it might be a good idea to show up an hour early. 
If you show up 10 minutes before like we did one time, you might be relegated to an impromptu table setup in the corner of the room. Tip number three, you can order free cappuccino and espresso at the main dining room without any drinks package. This goes for breakfast, lunch, or dinner at the Britannia restaurant. Tip number four, you might not need to pack as much clothing because on the Queen Mary 2, there is free use laundry facilities. If you really want to travel super light, you can even buy the prerequisite formal wear at their shop to be ready for dinner and evening events. Tip number five, don't go to a show thirsty or hungry. Because one thing very different on the Queen Mary 2 versus a regular cruise ship is that there is no drinks or bar service at the Royal Court Theater. In fact, food and drinks are not allowed inside. Tip number six, there are some excellent food at the Corinthia Lounge for lunch and afternoon snack. We realized that too late during our voyage and was only able to try it out once. Tip number seven, the internet is very slow on the Queen Mary 2, but we found the best reception for Wi-Fi at the Royal Court Theater and the Britannia main dining room. Also, if you happen to not purchase an internet package, you might be able to access it at one of the computer stations in the library. Tip number eight, there is a mandatory immigration inspection, but they have it spread out through several days. So if you show up and the line is massive, just come back the next day and you wouldn't have to wait as long. Tip number nine, room service is still free, which is a rarity nowadays with most cruise lines charging for it. So those were hopefully some helpful tips. And here are a couple of tidbits that you might want to know before going on the Queen Mary 2. First, the evening formal attire requirement isn't as strict as you might think, but just don't go in sneakers and jeans. Also on the transatlantic crossing, it can get kind of shaky during the middle of the voyage. So if you're prone to sea sickness, you might want to bring along some medication for that. Another thing to know is that there is a time change just about every day. Since we were sailing from New York to the UK, we were losing about an hour almost daily. Also, the buffet is crew served, just like Hall in America, and it's always been like that even before the pandemic. Cunard even takes it up a notch though, by insisting that the beverages from the dispensers are also crew served. And that concludes part two of our Queen Mary 2 tour. Plus hopefully some useful tips and information to make the most out of your sailing on the Queen Mary 2. So what do you think? If you were on the Queen Mary 2 before, do you have any additional tips or information to share? And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask. And please do give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Thank you very much, happy cruising, and we'll see you soon in another video.